What's going on guys, Command here, and welcome to another development update for Traitor 3. So since the last development update video on Traitor 3, some major things have changed, and other things haven't changed so much. Something that hasn't changed though is these stupid convenient mentions of my Ko-Fi page. My Ko-Fi page has a number of different custom textured assets, and in some case characters, for you to use in your 3D scenes. From clone troopers to stormtroopers to special characters like Captain Vaughn and Commander Cody, as well as a custom model of a TK trooper that I've made as well. I also have commissions open, so if you want me to do something for you, send me a message and I'll be happy to help you. Link in the description. So, let's start with what has changed. If you've been keeping an eye on my channel, then you'll be aware that I've purchased a Rococo motion capture suit, and I've posted some tests of it on YouTube. For those who are not aware of what this suit is and how it works, it's essentially what it says on the tin, it's a motion capture suit. Similarly to what I did with my VR using Glycon and APS, but not only is Rokoku a wireless suit, but it comes with 23, I think, pucks that track your movement, which is more accurate than the four points of tracking that I was limited to using with the VR version. On top of that, Rococo doesn't require me to have anything to do anything over my face like the VR does because I've got to use the headset. So I can see what I'm doing as I'm doing the motion, which is a bit of a disadvantage that I had with the VR mocap. Another main difference, as you can imagine, is the quality of the tracking. It's so much better with the Rococo suit. A1, because you've got more trackers on my body, but also because I'm using this in the downstairs area of my house, which is a lot more space for longer, more complex mocap takes, and stuff that I was restricted, restricted by when I was in my bedroom. Just been able to do long walk cycles from my front door to the bottom of my garden and seeing that translate into Traitor 3 just makes me so happy. I've always tried to do the best that I can with Traitor and this suit is a major element in doing that. Another thing that I've purchased is an iPhone 12 and you might be thinking, well, so what? But this device has a depth camera on it which creators use who do this sort of thing use to do facial motion capture mainly for metahumans, which is what I'll be using it for but they also do other kinds of facial motion capture as well. I used to use my Android camera and then put that data into FaceWare Studio, but not only is the tracking not the best, it costs £170 per year for a year for a license for a year for FaceWare Studio. Now, I did spend £350 on this iPhone, but the Unreal plugin for MetaCubes is 100% free, and considering the quality of tracking that comes along with it, I think it's worth it. Just to show you what I mean, for example, this render I made with Faceware Studio with an Imperial Officer for Traitor 3, and as you can see, it's not horrible, but it's not that great either. The eyelids won't stay open, the face expressions in general are really flat and sloppy. However, this render with my Tomorrow Morrison Clone Trooper Metahuman, as you can see, is so much better. Now, this is still a test, and it can be better, but even comparing this to the face where motion capture that I had before and I'd already rendered, the difference is night and day. So what other progress have I made? Well something I can show you which is kind of an achievement for me, and that's making one of the fighting Chimera characters, Amber. Now the reason why this is a bit of a big deal is because you can see that Amber has a prosthetic hand and leg. Now there is a backstory for her and why she has this, but I won't get into it now because I do have a plan for it. However, the way I managed to get this to work is assembled the models together in Blender and they use AccuRig to accurately rig the new model with a skeleton so I can pose a mocap it without having the arse ache of reskinning and weight painting the new model with the original skeleton. It would have been possible, but you could argue the result would have been better since AccuRig isn't very good at weight painting armour. However, the result that I did get isn't really that bad either. And while I'm talking about one member of Fighting Chimera, I may as well show you this, which is all the members of the fire team: Ash, Dima, Sierra 450, and Amber. One with the helmets on, and the second with the helmets off, with the metahuman heads with replacements. Now, do take into account that this is something that I did just for fun, and the metahumans are not posed in any way. The other reason I did this was because I wanted to render them with the hel without the helmets and with faces. But because metahumans are restricted to Unreal Engine, I cannot do it in Blender. So it's a bit of a nuisance, but it is workable. Something else that's smaller I want to talk about is that I've done some more work on the AI character Luna that I showed off in the last development update. The main change you can see is that I've changed the metahuman head, and this one I think looks a lot better. One thing I did was also use a proper hair model instead of whatever it was I was using before. 
The main reason why I had the hair in that way was because metahuman's hair and the way the material base, the base material, the master material for the for the hair of metahumans works is useless if you want to do VFX with it. So Luna's appear effect, which I will talk about in a second, won't work with normal metahuman hair because of the way the master material is set up. So what I did instead was get the hair model and materials that was used for Cortana in Halo Infinite because I have that from the Halo Archive Discord, which by the way is an insane resource if you're looking for free Halo assets for your games and cinematics. So because the hair materials for Cortana were normal texture maps, I can set them up in normal material nodes and the effect that I'm going to use for making Luna appear and disappear will work properly. On the topic of this dissolve effect, this is what's going to make Luna appear and disappear in the episode, much like Cortana does in Halo. Now, I'm not going to go into the details about how this is set up, because it's a bit complex, but I will leave a link in the description to where I learnt how to do this so you can check it out yourself. So this is all the progress that I've made, which doesn't seem a lot since it's been nearly 4 months since the last one. However, the main reason for this is because A1 I've been doing a lot of 3D modelling and stuff like that in the background, but also, because of me getting my Rococo suit and iPhone for facial mocap, all the renders that I have already done I needed to redo because I want this episode of Traitor to be the highest quality that I can possibly get, and that includes redoing something if I can do it better. Like this shot that I'm showing now, this side has the mocap from VR, and next to it is the same shot but with the Rococo suit, and you can see the difference. It's annoying because this is the 4th to 5th scene in the episode and I had VR mocap up to this point as well as the facial mocap data all ready to go to be rendered but because this scene that you're seeing now has some parts in it that require walking and in my bedroom I wasn't able to do it with VR and it proved a problem. This gets me to one of the main objectives that I have with this episode of Traitor, kind of like one of the three pillars that I'm going by and this one is being quality. Something I did with Traitor Prequel that I still kick myself for now is that I got to the end of production and heading towards my deadline fast and I was running out of time. This made me panic and I was getting through a scene a week and because I was doing it so quickly I was making mistakes and not caring about the quality at all. Take this for example, it looks quite good, it captures the nature and environment of Geonosis but this scene looks so much worse. The lighting is off, the animations look really bad, the audio doesn't sync up properly with the, move, with the movements of the characters and the lazy VFX don't work well either. This is a result of me rushing to get this episode done. I ignored these and continued on and it continues to bug me that I didn't fix it. This is the one of the things that I'm determined to do with Traitor 3. If I look at something either in raw mocap or in a fully rendered video that I don't think looks right and that could be improved, I'll go back and do it again until I'm happy with it. Now, while I say that, I do know my limitations and I'm not going to go full OCD with this episode. Some things I know that I'm not able to fix, like clipping for example. Take this shot, you can see quite clearly that CR450's helmet clips into the pauldron but if I change the position of the head so that it doesn't clip through the pauldron, it would still look weird because his head would be looking into space. So while I'm determined to focus on quality as one of the main pillars for this episode, I also know there are some areas where I can only do this to a limited degree. Also, something I want to point out while we are talking about mocap and animation is that I'm not saying for one second that Glycon and APS are not good softwares at all. You can see from the work that I've done with it already that the output is really good and both of them support Vive trackers, which means you can walk around with it. And if you want to get into animation and you don't have the money to spend on a suit, this is a solution I highly recommend. However, the main reason why I bought a Rococo suit was because my Vive trackers wouldn't connect to my laptop. And because of that, I couldn't do long walk cycle animation in the downstairs area of my house. And that was the main kicker that made me purchase it in the first place. Because I knew that if I wanted this episode of Traitor to be the best that I can make it, then any limitations in how I make the episode would have to be fixed in some way. So if my vibe trackers did connect to my laptop, I would still be using my VR mocap to do mocap now. Saying that though, I am blown away by what the Rococo suit can do. And if you want to get into making cinematics and such in Unreal Engine or Blender, I cannot recommend this suit enough if you have the money. Now, I know it's a lot for most people, but considering the best, next best thing is an XN suit that costs almost three times the Rococo suit, I think it's a pretty good deal. 
So that's all about, about all I have time to show in this update video. I wish I had more progress to share, but a lot of the past four months has been updating things and redoing what I've already done to make use of my new technology that I have at my disposal. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button for more awesome gaming, update, CGI, whatever type of content that I do post nowadays. And I shall see you all later. Bye!